Trauma triggers are a normal part of having experienced a traumatic experience. And grief triggers exist as well. And when we've had both, those triggers will amplify each other. Grief triggers are those experiences that our mind and body has created across the course of our relationship with the person or the thing that is no longer a part of our world. Everything from smells to sounds to moments in time, such as anniversaries, can become a bastion for a trigger coming on board. These experiences can feel confounding and heartbreaking, like a wave of grief just crashing in upon us, especially in the least expecting moments. It's really painful when these moments happen because they bring back to life that which was and will never be again. Navigating grief and trauma triggers is another request for deep self-compassion, an awareness that this is your brain and your body creating an anticipatory sensory experience around what used to be. And because it is coming from the mind-body system, there's an opportunity for us to harness neuroplasticity and to create ongoing change, to re-narrate what used to be and create the future, build the way we want to be moving forward. Of course, that can be really hard in the midst of a trauma or grief trigger. The first step that I always recommend, and I use myself to this day, is the CPR for the amygdala protocol. If you're not familiar with that, we have an entire playlist on this channel. The CPR for the amygdala protocol is so powerful because it not only calms the mind and the body system in the moment, it also de-links the trigger from the amygdala, making it less likely that the experience will be as intense the next time we have some sort of engagement with a like stimuli. This has really, really powerful and significantly softened my own healing journey as I was navigating through both PTSD and the loss of my fiance. There's other opportunities to help us stay grounded in the present moment. Grounding is a wonderful tool to remind our brain that we're here and now. When we get triggered, our brain can feel as though we're back there where the moment of the sensory encoding was actually encoded. Our brain actually has a little timekeeper that goes offline in the moment of a traumatic encoding, and you guessed it, in the moment of a trauma trigger, that little brain part's a little less accessible or sometimes completely offline in the present moment. So using your breathing tools, doing your grounding exercises, practicing mindfulness, even using ice or other really intense sensory experiences like warheads, that's why I just pointed to my mouth, eating a really, really sour candy can bring us back into the present moment and remind our brain and yes, our little friend Amy the amygdala that we are here right now. That then creates a space for us to start to re-narrate or create a new opportunity around what has happened in the moment to trigger ourselves. That can look like doing that then, CPR for the amygdala exercise, or starting to create new patterns or meaning making around the sensory experiences. So something that used to trigger you can have a new meaning making, a new purpose, saying, oh, wow, my brain is remembering that person really intensely because of this sensory element. Rather than feeling the loss, starting to shift the experience into, when I smell this, I'm going to remember them with loving care and helping the brain go in a different direction from the trauma direction. Our brain is full of different neural decision trees and the more we practice sending our brain in one direction, the more likely it is to go in that direction in the future. Remember, you have healing in your hands. That's the title of my book. That's why I wrote the book, because we truly can sculpt our brain and build the world we want to live with. 